Yeah. Let me show you the recipe real quick. This is the full recipe, regular recipe, is a thousand milliliters of water, twenty milliliters of uh, I'm sorry, twenty grams of agar, and twenty grams of malt extract or dextrose, whatever you happen to be using for your nutrients. For a half batch, keep the ratios the same, so it's five hundred milliliters of water, ten grams of agar, and ten grams of nutrients. The amount of agar per water, your ratio there, determines how thick it is. That is an economical ratio. It gives you a very usable platform. You could double or triple or quadruple the amount, but you'd just be wasting agar, and you'd end up with something that's really, really difficult to work with. There's no need. Now, if you only put in 10 grams of agar, you'd end up with a real soupy, sloppy mess that would be almost impossible to work with. Too thick to go through a needle and too thin to get picked up on a loop or be cut. So that's why you got to keep your numbers in line. The mysterious agar. Telephone brand packets are usually what I see most often in a retail store, in Asian stores. It's kind of like an unflavored jello or gelatin they use it to make some coffee dessert. But that's what it looks like. Take a screenshot of that if you need to. Show it to them in the store and say, this is what I'm looking for. It's a pretty distinctive package. They ought to recognize it. Three hundred grams of potato. It's about a half of a good-sized baking potato. Three hundred grams is about like that. Cause I know what you're thinking. It's like, hey, attractive, smart, handsome, sciencey guy. I got home with my potato and forgot to wait at the store. Whatever will I do? Okay, we got a cup. Turning that on. Blah blah blah. blah. It's gonna be about thirty-three. I'm going to tear that. Be a cup of moderately half as diced up potatoes of different sizes and then kind of smushed into a cup. Cut it in long strips and went back and whacked it into like quarter or half inch thick pieces and then diced that up a little bit. But let's stop yapping and start weighing. So that gives us 143 grams of potatoes. So one cup. 143 grams of potatoes. I might even round that up since it's kind of a rounded cup. Do a little more in there, squish some more in there, call it 150 grams per cup. Mmm, potato water. Measuring cup, strainer. Cheesecloth over it, kind of center it there for the best. Potato water. And two said cheesecloth. Potato water. B. For our height, should come up to that piece of tape. So we're a little bit short. We're just going to make that up with water to get back to our original volume, and we'll be all set. Uh, our other goodies are five grams of the agar. Actually, this is the five grams of dextrose and a little bitty tiny pinch of yeast is what we have going on right there. And then we have the agar. So, here's the thing. Agar is not going to dissolve all that well until you get it really, really hot. So, we're going to pour this into a one-quart jar. And then just pour that in. And I'm just going to throw a lid, regular metal lid. I might throw it in inverted so it doesn't completely seal. And a loosely screwed on lid. Just for giggles. You could put it on foil too, it wouldn't make that much difference. The pressure will be fine. Put up the pressure cooker. It's been in there about 10, 12 minutes. Ouch. There is still steam coming up, so we're going to let that sit for a minute. Give it a 
ow, ow. Yeah, we're leaving that alone. So we're going to let it sit for a minute, cool off, then we're going to pour it into the measuring cup. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is get that into those. I'm going to try to freehand this here because I want you to see how much is actually going to go in there. Right through that little etched part on the round. Just a little thin layer in there. That's all that it takes. That's all we really want. Coaching. Cheers. It's all temperature sensitive, so you have to pour the agar before it hardens up. If it cools off too much, it'll harden up and then you have to reheat it. Not a big deal with the pasty plates, that's one of the reasons they're so forgiving, but if you were pouring regular petri dishes, that would really suck because you'd lose your sanitary conditions on the agar. But we don't need it in this instance because we're going to pressure cook it again. There they are, all loaded in. Got a couple things of water in there too with the fancy fittings. And I'll put in some of our marinade injectors. Radio edit. All right, because there's no censorship on YouTube. Bastion of free speech. All right, let's roll. Kick the tires, light the fires.